uh, per episode. Uh, we're joined today with none other than our esteemed guest, uh, Sheikh uh, Mufti Menk. Hayakallah, Sheikh. How are you? Barakallah feek. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Not too bad, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum to all the viewers and listeners. Barakallah feek. Uh, we know that you're tired today, a little bit. No, it's okay, mashallah. I always say rest will be in the grave. Wallillahi, alhamdulillah. It's a good way to start a podcast, isn't it? It's true, subhanallah. You know, that, you know, actually, it's interesting that you said that, uh, Sheikh, because you know, if we look at, if we look at, mashallah, your popularity, your appeal, I would say to the masses, the question that kind of arises, I think, to most du'at and most of the, the kind of people, listeners and the followers, and which is that, really, what what strategies, how did your principles, did you use to kind of make Islam uh, appeal to the masses? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'in. Number one is popularity is from Allah. Uh, to be honest, some people run behind that popularity. They 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 look for it. They search for it. They they promote themselves. Yashhadullah, Allah is a witness. I've never promoted myself. Never. I've never asked people to to, <coughs> to come towards me. Nor have I gone down the avenue of attacking others so that I look like the good guy. And a lot of people make that mistake. I have very deeply and carefully studied the psychology of the people who we are trying to call towards Allah. And I've spent a lot of time, money, effort, and energy doing that. So I think it's very, very calculated. It's not, uh, it's not something silly or just off the cuff a lot of the times. It could be. It could be sometimes, you know, spontaneous. And we do make mistakes. We are human beings. Yeah. But I've noticed a lot of strategic blunders that some of the du'at make, some of the people calling towards Allah make a lot of strategic blunders. I've stayed away from it, if you notice. We keep giving a good message. People at the moment, yes, as much as we know, al iman bayn al khawfi wal raja, you know, the, the, the balance between khawf and raja is what makes you a Muslim <coughs> to, 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 to have the consciousness of Allah and the fear on one hand and to have hope on the other hand. Today there is so much fear already existing outside. We need a lot of hope. So, you know, when we say bayn al khawf wal raja, uh, someone asked me once, shouldn't it be 50 50? I said, no. It needs to be a balance. That balance depends on the situation around you. If there is so much of fear, you instill hope. If there is so much of hope, you instill a little bit of that consciousness of Allah that brings about the... <coughs> so what, what we need to remember, uh, Habibi, is uh, it is a very, very big challenge. It is really, really difficult. I mean, we're living in a situation where uh, nothing is going to be totally ideal. Yeah. We have to keep going, keep being positive. And you will face a lot of negativity. Many times, don't even incline towards it. Don't let it bother you. If you know what you're saying is correct, قال الله, قال الرسول, uh, you have the ulama and mashayikh that you uh, take from, and you have you know the people who are uh, around you, uh, who are there to correct you genuinely, uh, then you don't have to worry about what the world is going to say. Many people are young. They, many people <coughs> hate you. Many people will obviously dislike you. Uh, I've heard of, uh, for example, a student in Medina Munawara, six years ago, he told someone, I hate this guy, I'm going to nail him. Yeah, it took him four yeah, years yeah. to find this petty thing. Someone told me that this guy said this. I said it was expected and I'm expecting him and his group to say even more because that's what they had already planned to do. So if I'm going to start responding refutations, my job will shift from spreading a good message to just becoming a responder of refuters. And, 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 and they are wrong. Actually, if they really cared for me, they would have reached out to me in a beautiful <coughs> way. They would have spent money to travel to you to say, listen, my brother, you know, Allah's blessed you with X, Y, Z. We just want to make sure that we're on the right page here. Why did you do this? Or please don't do this. Or we think this is wrong. And we can discuss the matter. But the mistake people are making is the masses out there, they've had enough of dispute, you know, people telling them this is, uh, this guy is bad, that guy is bad. Who's telling them what's right? Who's teaching them in a positive way? You know, people have real life problems and we, we keep telling them how wrong all the other scholars are. But have we ever <coughs> offered them something positive? And this is why, you know, when I heard of your Dawah initiative, I, I thought uh, it, it, it was a very good opportunity to actually reach out to you guys and say, you know what, uh, may Allah make it easy for all of us. May Allah bless the du'at. And I really believe we are brothers and sisters in Islam, not just uh, the, the males, even the females. There are a lot of females doing good work. Some of them are known, some of them are not known. So dealing with this popularity is very scary. It's really, on one hand, you didn't ask for it. On the other hand, it came and people think you asked for it. You know, they use the term celebrity. Uh, it can be used in a positive way or a negative way. It can be used in a derogatory way. So when they, when they say, usually when they use the word celebrity sheikh, if another sheikh is using it, he is referring to it in a derogatory way. 
But celebrity actually means someone who's famous. And if Allah's give, if Allah's put that to you, it becomes a responsibility. And I think by them saying it, it could either be genuinely, there are some people out there who, who compromise themselves and promote themselves by demoting others or by compromising the truth. If that's the case, then we, we, may Allah correct us. But, but if it is simply because we, uh, you know, Allah allowed something to grow. I remember I started way before a lot of people. And people say, how come you have such a big following? I say, but look, I, I started way back, way before you guys. So, and people don't realize how old you are when you graduated and you know how, uh, how many years you've been on. If I told you that I've started Dawah more than 20 years ago, you know, you'd think that I'm, you know. I thought, I thought you were 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, especially especially uh, Mufti with the braces that you got there. Well, I had to have them because, my, yeah, because I had to have them actually. I didn't want them, but I had to have them. So make, it gives you a younger feel as well. And do you know what else gives you a younger yeah. feel? I'll be honest with you. I was on your um, Instagram yeah. and I saw a video of you uh, doing a bit of Skydiving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so to be honest with you, what happens is a lot of the times people think du'at are always boring yeah. and so on. And uh, some of these things are, are permissible. They may not be encouraged in Islam, but it's permissible. And you know what? Uh, sometimes you do it for purposes of uh, getting people to feel the real you, you're a human. When I grew up, I remember the gap we had between the ulama <coughs> and the others. You know, yeah. and the, there was a big gap. And I always told myself, no, we, we don't want that gap. And, yeah. Yeah. You don't, I didn't compromise my deen. People saying it's haram and you're committing suicide. I didn't. I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. You're throwing yourself into a lot of the idiq. I want to see, so, was, I want to see the said, ending of that video. Because we only saw when you were in the air, but I didn't oh. see when you landed, though. Yeah, I, I, might, I, I, might have it. <coughs> yeah. I might have it with me. I may show you after the yeah. session. <laughs> and that also showed me a video of you jumping into a swimming pool. Yeah, oh, <laughs> subhanAllah. Allah, 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 We can facilitate that. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of this goes to show people the other side to it, in the sense that your human yeah. side and the thing that fun is permissible to a degree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. fun is definitely permissible. Why is it that we come across like dry people who, you know, it's either you're either in the masjid in Salah or reading Quran, etc. And that's it. You know, yeah. even when you're at home, there's no joke, there's no nothing, you're just serious and so on. Mm -hmm. It's challenging. You have family, you have children, you know, to, yeah. to attend to and so on. Yeah. So I think a lot of that is, is got to do with, um, you know, people think you're showing off. It's not showing off. It's actually giving <coughs> them the other side to who you can be, who you are. For them to relate to the rest of what you do and say it's very important but like i told you it's a strategy that has been studied it's not just something like yeah. that I, and, and, and that's it's been successful one i mean may, may allah yeah. grant us ease may allah grant us ease another thing for example that I, I need to make mention of is you see everyone every day is specialized in different things sometimes we want all the dua to do what we do the way we do it yes. that's wrong it's like telling all the doctors all your specialities are all nonsense. You all have to be pediatricians. Yeah. What's going to happen to the rest of the specialists? Yeah. So each one specializes in something different. Each one's methods will be different. Sometimes, you know, the tools of the trade may be different, but the source is always the Quran and the Sunnah. So uh, what we tend to forget, we want everyone to do things the way we do. We want everyone to think the way we do. i give you another quick example. Facebook and Twitter, for it. the words I use on Facebook and Twitter in particular, they are such that they would be digestible by all people of all faiths. Okay. So uh, people say, why do you use the word almighty? Tell me, is it haram? If it's not, keep quiet, please. I know what I'm doing. And they say, astaghfirullah, you're, you're astray. You never use the word Allah. I use the word Allah every day. I mean, I started this session by saying, Bismillah, you know, and Allah says, Allah husna. You can use the term Allah, you can use the word Ar-Rahman. These are all the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's amazing. We've changed setting. We've come here. It's a bit better. There's no distractions in the background and we can hear our voices uh, much better. And of course, the Sheikh's voice, Mufti Meng's voice. Uh, clearer as well. Um, let's try and uh, we pick, up where we left off? pick up where we left off. I think, uh, Sheikh, you, you were talking about uh, it was a subject of to do with you know humility, and you mentioned a, lot, a number of your followers. I mean, the question I would pose to you would be, how do you maintain a kind of spiritual humbleness? How do you protect yourself from the pitfall of al ujub bin nafs becoming amazed with yourself? Because popularity it, it can be a disease, and it can be something that very very subtly seeps into the heart of a person. I think uh, different people are on different levels and they deal with it differently. I normally have a lot of secret deeds that I do that I'm happy with between me and Allah. Mm -hmm. If you notice, I like to drive on my own. I have my me time. It's between me and Allah. I know what I do in my 
Um, I like to be on my own because away from the hustle and the bustle of the people. And a lot of the times I, I, I enjoy working with the underprivileged, with people who are, uh, you know, I mean, I don't need to give away what I do, but uh, it's just me. May Allah make it easy. Um, they, um, and I, I, I definitely, I know for a fact that for me, uh, by the will of Allah, so far, I can guarantee you, I'm sure you guys probably felt the same. I like to treat people uh, with uh, believing that they're better than me. That's how I like to treat people. And no matter who they are, that's the way we, we speak with humility and humbleness. Yes, we, I may have my own weaknesses. If there are genuine people who raise that to me, I definitely take it on board. I can change things. Even if I've said something, I'm not one who's afraid to apologize and say, I'm sorry, I was, it was a mistake, no matter how. And a lot of people don't have that quality. I'm not saying that I'm any better than them, but I, I've learned that, you know what, you can't do that. I, uh, another thing is, as far as possible, I try to, you know, keep people within the fold. I'm not one to, to, to find an excuse to take them out. I want to find an excuse to keep them in and bring them in. And there's a very, very big Absolutely. difference. I've noticed a lot of young people uh, in their da'wah sometimes, they, they, they're very fast to actually, like I said earlier, find the worst possible meaning of something that someone has said. <laughs> Whereas Husn of one is a basic teaching of Islam and the guy said, no, but we knew. I mean, we noticed the quality of people changes. Another thing is, I come from a third world country. I, 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 we've been through very difficult times. We, at the moment, we're going through very, very tough the Hyperinflation times. and all those things in Zimbabwe. Absolutely. The, mm. you know, the currency being completely deleted and yeah. so on. Mm. And a lot of people are struggling. And, uh, you know, it's not a joke. It's not easy. Mm. But Alhamdulillah, to be able to help people, even give them a good word, is a very big ibadah that many of us it's don't consider. A lot of people think, you know, it's to do only with salah, zakah and so on. Whereas that is absolutely important. I'm not taking away from its importance, sure. but there are other things that are also important that <laughs> we, we tend to take for granted. And mm -hmm. I remember the once I said, look, you know, people sometimes only look at Salah, Zakah. I had a refutation, people saying, look, this guy is saying Salah is not important. And Zakah yeah, is yeah, not yeah, yeah. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> this is what I mean. <laughs> you, you can never get it right. So, <laughs> so sometimes you have people or family members or someone who says, did you see what this guy said about you? I said, I don't need to know. We, we've got to know what, what you think Allah is saying about you on the day of Qiyamah. Oh, okay. so you're writing your book, write it mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I'm writing a book, you're writing a book. That's my book, your book for the day of Qiyamah. I better write it proper, proper, mm -hmm. the best possible book. Mm. So may Allah make it easy. Oh, I, I think it yeah. is it is a problem when people get a little bit of fame. Yes. yes. I've seen people change. Mm. But I want everyone to know that if you think I've changed, please tap me on my shoulders, let me know, send me a nasty, nasty email in the most direct, abusive way. <laughs> it will still help me. It will help me, mashallah. On on know. that point, um you were talking about Hasna <coughs> Van and like refutations and so on. Um, and we were talking on uh, off the record on like uh, recently put up a post on Christmas and some people have interpreted that yeah. as you know that you're trying to uh, sanction Christmas or something like that, which is not what the which is not what the post said. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you make of this kind of reaction? This yeah. kind of bitter reaction from, I from think, people. Yeah, I think that's a very important point. Actually, it, mm. it, it was not. It was more about learning to respect people of other faiths. Okay. Because I have a following that is mm. a Muslim, non-Muslim, and right, a, you know, right, right. learning to respect people of other faiths. I'm not saying you agree with them at all. So yes, you know, right. like I'm saying, whether you whether you celebrate Christmas or not, meaning mm -hmm. whether you belong, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, in yeah, other words, yeah. right? Uh, be respectful. To right, That's right. what I'm saying because people mm. started making it such a big issue. I This year alone, I've had so many emails from reverts because as you know, a lot of people do revert to Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of them, young, still depend totally on their families and their families have welcomed them, catered for them, you know, uh, made a little mus uh, uh, halal corner in the fridge and they're asking me, is it okay to have one shelf in the fridge with only my things? Mm. Now, uh, now, someone who doesn't know and they've been in a Muslim environment, they could be a scholar, they could be a senior scholar. If you say, can I share a fridge? If you ask them, can I share a fridge mm. where there is pork and there is halal meat for me, on, or, you know, and it's in the fridge and separated, what will they say? There's only one answer. They will say no. But if you ask me in the context, 
mm-hmm. that they're living in, yeah. they've done well. And <coughs> so long as, I will say, so long as it's separated and well-defined and not contaminated, you may use this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, th- there is a difference. People haven't thought. So I've had people who eat at their folks every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christmas Day, they say, look, we have to eat. Everyone's going to come here. We're going to you're going to eat it's halal food if it's your halal food you're going to eat your intention is to have the meal because you live there anyway Mm -hmm. you did not go and participate in something you didn't forgive you didn't forego your deen or anything Mm -hmm. that's your life that people don't understand Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so there was no uh, there was no condoning of anything that islam disagrees with nor was this but it's just to say that you know another thing is Mm -hmm. I'm on holiday, you're on holiday. There's ways of looking at things. If I say Safar Saeed, Rukla Saeed, you know, at any holiday. I mean, who said that the holiday uh, uh, that we have maybe in, according to a Muslim country, at a certain time of the year, if someone says, hey, have a happy holiday, my brother, enjoy it and come. I mean, someone might argue that's the Gregorian calendar, Mm. Gregorian calendar, Mm. and so on. Uh, we're, we're making it clear that this is to do with those who are, I was on holiday, you're on holiday. Mm-hmm. I said, bro, enjoy yourself, you know, yeah. have a good holiday. <laughs> Did that make me a yeah. person who condoned some festival or whatever else? Mm-hmm. No, it didn't. But mm-hmm. when people, what I noticed about the da'wah mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the field, yes, yes, you have jealousy. It's, it's there. 100%. Yeah. Yes. And it's you know what? You make your mind up that you hate this guy. Yeah. It, it's it's made up already. Mm-hmm. So anything You're and everything. To find something. No, anything and everything that comes from the person is already wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. I yeah, remember a, a brother telling me clearly that you know, uh, <laughs> and I think I said this in the earlier segment. That there's a student in Medina for for six years ago. He said, "I don't like this guy. I'm going to show you what I do to him." And actually, if I take it back to the source of all the issues that I've had, it goes back to the one brother, no one else. I can actually take it straight. You know what? He, yeah, yeah. he has had the opportunity to talk to me, to meet me. To, he didn't want to. That's not his aim. Mm. So if I'm going to engage him, I won't succeed because that was never his aim. Mm. So leave it. Leave it to Allah. Mm. He's writing his book. I'm writing mine. Mm-hmm. Why should I write my book filled with his name? Mm-hmm. I'd rather write my book filled with good deeds. Mm. On the top so of this is the discipline required in da'wah is such that you need to be focused. You need to know what you want. You need to be have apply wisdom you need to be soft if you're not uh, soft when i say soft i'm not saying compromise your deen mm-hmm. but soft in the way you talk soft in the way you come across you don't because allah says people do people read the verse if you were hard hearted if you were harsh they would have dispersed People read the verse, but they don't apply it. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. It's yes. a rahma of Allah when you have lean. When people talk to you, they should immediately feel that, you know what, this person is approachable. Mm-hmm. I can talk to them. They're going to listen to me. Yes, yeah. they may present a strong opinion, but in a very respectful way. And uh, yeah, there have been times, subhanAllah, when people may, may, may even think that you're, uh, you know, you're an extremist, and yet you're not. Because you, all you're doing is you're just making clear that, you know what, I, mm. I, I disagree with this, for example, but respectfully, you have the right to disagree with me mm-hmm. in the same mm-hmm. way. You know? yeah. It's a tough one. Barakallah, Fik. You, you mentioned the happy holidays, and obviously seeing as that we're in the advent of the new year, 2019, if we were to look back over 2018, what would be your highlights of the year? Before we say that, I just want to also remind you that the fact that you mentioned 2019 and 2018, please expect a refutation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because there are people who don't realize they, they use the same calendars for their events and so on. And if you said, look, we're now in 2018, what about you? They say, why did you distinguish it? I mean, it's a reality. That's what it's I'm trying to tell people. It's, mm-hmm. and, I, I was laughing at, and I was laughing at a very, very uh, religious brother who says, hey, you know what? We had some good sales this time. I said, where? He said, the Christmas sales. I said, you mean you bought? He says, yeah. I said, come on, should I make a refutation? No, <laughs> but it's it's got to do with your it's got to do with your yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, now, now going back to your question, you know, yeah. uh, you, you, 2018. What did you ask again? You see, what, what, <laughs> what, what were your highlights of the year? If you if you're looking back over it, you know what I try to do. Uh, I, I thank Allah when things go wrong because for Allah. us it's wrong. For Allah, it's not wrong. Allah. I really, Allah. I always, I always have this habit that when things happen the way you want them, you say Alhamdulillah. When they don't happen the way you want them, you say it twice. Mm-hmm. Because now your boss has taken over and says, "Hang on, I know something. Well, I know what's better than better for you." Allah. You know? Allah. So, Allah. Allah. Mm. And you know, it, 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 you can pick up people. I've sat with a lot of scholars, a lot of people, a lot yes. of uh, students of knowledge, a lot of new graduates, and sometimes you can pick up this person has a lot of experience this person knows he's been through the movie he's seen what's going on i pick it up and this is why it's not easy 
Mm. Over the last year, uh, I try not to look too much at achievements. The reason is we want to work, work, work. One day we'll see the achievements. Someone told me, hey, you know, you've got so many million followers now. It's just clocked onto the next million. And there was a group who, it, it's amazing, but I must mention this. Yeah. Uh, the, a group who was promoting some of my talks and they got to a million followers and they, they said, uh, or, or, you know, they put up a post saying million followers and immediately, it's not me. Yeah. Someone else who's doing it. You know, we don't have copyright, so to speak. So someone else doing it. And I immediately got hold of them and I told them, please remove this. It's got nothing to do with the million and the two million and the five Allah. million. This is for Allah. Allah. If those figures shouldn't even bother you. Otherwise, you become a slave. You start looking at, did you see? Did you see how many likes? Did you see how many views? I don't care how many views. I don't care how many likes. I just did something. You leave it. Allah. You know, you just do the deed. So the, the positives, uh, I, 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 you know, there is growth for Allah and Hamd, and I ask Allah to accept it from us. I always tell myself that you know, there's a there's a time up to which Allah will allow you to do things. After which it may become more and more difficult, and it is becoming more and more difficult. But I still thank Allah because it makes us, it refines us, it makes us better people. We start watching the way we speak, the way we say things. You know, so. The negatives that uh, you know have come about, uh, you have to bear patience. You have to, and and I'm one like if you were to ask me, you know, you know what's the most negative thing that happened to you through this year, I would comfortably tell you, you know what, I can't really remember because I don't leave it in my mind. I just let it go. I don't leave it in my mind. And wallahi, I'm not joking with you. Uh, may Allah make it easy. Yeah. Every day you're going to face challenges. That's why we're on earth. <coughs> we're on earth for this test, you know, mm-hmm. the challenges that we're facing. We have to learn to become. And every every day we will learn new things. Every day we will see the challenges. What I've learned also about, about my field, your field, the field of Dawah, we, we usually give people uh, advice based on our circumstances, not based on theirs. And that's a mistake. We don't take into consideration the trials of others. Their circumstances. And this is why to mix and interact with the poor, those who are struggling and suffering, those who are Muslims in an environment where it's so difficult to be Muslim and so on. You know, what challenges they face rather than, uh, you know, making it so negative for them. I look at, and now I'm telling you what I do. I look at their environment and ask myself, how can I improve that environment so that they won't have to ask this question again? Rather than telling them, you know, this, I know ideally there's a lot of things that are allowed and disallowed. I can recite the verse of the Quran for you and the hadith, I can say it for you. But that that is where we're trying to get to. You know, people are struggling with concentration in Salah. Other people are struggling to get to five Salah. No, of course. And I remember, uh, <coughs> you know, in, in, in northern Nigeria, just uh, very recently, uh, we were talking about Salah. And I said, you know, we've got to be regular. It was a private talk. And I said, you know, we've got to be regular with our Salah. And I said, are there Muslims who don't read five Salah? Are there Muslims who don't read five Salah? Meaning like, you know, you're telling the wrong guys here, we read five Salah a day, you know? <laughs> And I'm like, gosh, in our part of the world, people are struggling, you know, they, 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 they're lazy. And then you have someone who would be sitting in a totally Islamic environment and would say, all of you are out of the fold because Salah is, is, is the line, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there, there are teachings. I'm not, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, the aqwal of the ulama at this moment. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, are you going to help people or you're not going to help them? I was going to ask about that because... Um, you do travel a lot. You've, I don't know how many countries you've been in, maybe 2018. So, or, or generally. I didn't count. They ask me all the time, how many countries? I didn't count. Somebody gave me a map yeah. where, where you've got to... Scratch you know, off. Scratch yeah, off yeah, where yeah. you've been. Yeah. I just gave it away to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well give them the... Just scratch the whole thing. I, I really thing. don't want a day to come when yeah. I say, now I've been to 85 countries. I've, I've done this and I don't want a day to come when that's, yeah. that's my motto. Yeah. That's irrelevant. But what I was going to ask was in terms of, you know, your, your family life, you know, your immediate families, yeah. I, this, how do you balance between doing all that work that you do, right, and then also trying to kind of accommodate for your family? Fulfill the wants yeah. of your family. Yeah, I think I, I, I have uh, cut down a lot on what I'm, you know, on, on the travels and mm-hmm. so on. Mm-hmm. And 2019, you, you will see further cuts. And it's good, you know, sometimes... Sound like a politician. 
2019 we'll see further cuts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. What I mean is in, in travels. And, yeah, yeah. And your family does come first. I have a family first policy, which means uh, yeah, I'm yeah. not talking obviously Allah and His Rasul. That's another level. I'm talking yeah, of yeah. you know yeah. concentration on on, on matters. Yeah. So here, uh, your family comes first. Your children need you. They're growing and mm. so on. And I really appreciate the family. It's not uh, easy for them to sacrifice <coughs> not seeing you and not being with you. And I usually use the the line that, you know, even if I was not in the field of da'wah and I had a, a regular 8 to 5 job, mm. I'd leave home at 6.30 and come back at about maybe 7.30 every single day. Yeah, that's true. And we just have a, a one day in the week or one and a half days in the week or two days free. And from that, there's a bit of me time, there's a bit of you time, there's a bit of us time and so on. And... Uh, there are other people who, who work in other countries and they, they go live for three months and come back for a week. Some yeah, people so pilots, for, for example. Some people go for a Tell year, them. for yeah. a whole year, and they come back. Look, mm. at I, I was in India last week, mm. last week mm. and uh, uh, I, so a lot of people were saying that the families are, uh, have one member who's an ex, who's working somewhere as an yeah. expat in the Middle mm. East and sending mm. salaries. Yeah. Some of yeah. them haven't visited home in two, three years. Some of mm. them more. Mm-hmm. Well, what about their family? So they've been sacrificing for dunya uh, much more than we sacrifice for the deen. But uh, I'm not saying that our, uh, we should use that as blackmail for our <coughs> wives. Right, right, People right. use it as blackmail to say, you know what, look, they've done it, they've done it, that's it, I'm going to do it. You know your situation. Mm-hmm. You may have a child that is, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, that requires greater attention and care. You may have a wife that is a little bit more uh, uh, requiring of that attention and care. Uh, you, and so on. So you have to tailor make it according to your family. Uh, How do you do that? Because, like, let's say practically speaking, you have a diary now. For example, yeah. we're going in two thousand nineteen, yeah, right? Yeah. You have lots of invitations coming up. How do you populate your diary with? Okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this. How, in in your mind, how how do you prioritize this? So if I'm going for work, right, I try to keep it short and sweet. Like, okay, I. I I don't go shopping, I don't go sightseeing, I don't go, meaning if I'm going for work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I keep it such because I I can tell you, you guys are in the field, I can tell you something. If I were to go somewhere, uh, like say Sri Lanka, I've been so many times, I've never been to a mall, I've never been sightseeing, I've never, I just went with my kids once. If my family is with me, I do it for their sake. Yeah. But I'd like to leave the place remembering the, the, the dawah that was done. I mean, if, if I'm going to go to a place uh, and I'm going to go into sightsee, when I go, how was it? This I'll say, oh, the mountains were beautiful. You know, the lake was lovely. Mm. Did I talk about the intention I went there for? Mm-hmm. No. It mm-hmm. became predominant. It's not wrong, but it's me. Mm-hmm. I've set myself a little bit, a level of discipline a little bit higher. So, so that's just, I'd like to, if I've done, if I've, if I'm done with my talk at 6.30 in the evening and there's a flight at 10 o'clock, I'm on that flight because mm-hmm. my family needs me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to spend that night, one extra night for nothing there without my family mm. or trying, trying to get to them. Mm-hmm. So, and, and if, if your event starts on Saturday morning and there's a flight coming there Friday evening, I'm on that flight. I'm not going to come in a few days unless obviously I've got something else to do. Uh, generally, uh, I uh, most of my family are British, so I I, I actually uh, when I'm here I'm mostly on holiday <coughs> vacation and that's it. Mm-hmm. But uh, elsewhere I go for work and come back. That's why you notice I spend a bit more time here sometimes. Yeah, because my kids live here actually. So some of them. And Alhamdulillah, it's it's just uh, something you have to strike the balance with. Mm-hmm. And each one has a different level of uh, a different threshold. Just like you have a threshold of pain that's mm-hmm. different from person to person. We also have a threshold of within our relationships that we can take to. Mm. Beyond that, you're going to break your home. Absolutely. Come on, you know. Wow, that's Even relations uh, with the opposite sex, I think it's very important in Dawa to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will communicate with the opposite sex respectfully, uh, knowing that you know there is a line there. Uh, it doesn't mean you ignore them completely, uh, because they they definitely are humankind. Uh, there, there is discussion of uh, the Dawa and how it should be done. If it's respectful within the term that Islam considers respectful, it shall happen. Mm. But the minute it becomes flirty and, 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 and yes. so on, it, it becomes a problem. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes uh, people can mistaken politeness for being, you know, for flirting. Yeah. Uh, there's a fine line between the two. It is an issue. Uh, I, I know once there was a case where 
uh, I was quite polite with some people and the next thing I heard someone say, oh, stuff, a lot, this guy was flirting and he was, it looked like he was interested. Trust me, I was not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I have a habit. If I was, I would immediately say, you know what, I would do something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I'm not making it easy. Um, on that topic of balancing between your family and, you know, I mean, as a student of knowledge, how do you find time to go over, for example, Matun and cut up and read and research? And is that something that you, you still engage in? Uh, do you still you teach? Have to, actually, you have to. Teaching, I, I, I've taught for many years and then I just the last the last two and a half, three years, I've uh, stepped down from formal teaching. Okay. Uh, Was that in Zimbabwe? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and w- one of the reasons is, you know, just to, to s- spend more time on uh, other types of da'wah. Okay. And, uh, what kind of teaching did you do? I used to teach uh, senior secondary Islamic studies. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've taught tafsir, I've taught uh, mawarith, ilm al mawarith, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. inheritance. You like that as well. And Quran, tajweed, etc. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's some of the subjects that I've. Mm-hmm. And even uh, a general knowledge, that was an Islamic general knowledge subject that I've taught before as well. Alhamdulillah, quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But. Um, to strike that balance is not is not easy, you know. Uh, we, you, you have to be disciplined. I have found, uh, and I, I will be honest with you, it's a struggle. Uh, my relationship with my phone is probably the best, uh, better than any other relationship I have uh, with with things. I use the phone for good deeds. I mean, uh, you know, even my Quran is from the phone. A lot of what I read is uh, the books. Also, I've got PDFs and we read from, from the, the phone, phone and so on. It, it makes it much easier. I don't have to carry things because... Now, when you travel and you've got to read things and you're carrying all these books, you know, they only allow you a certain number, a certain amount of weight. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, I, I need to perhaps create or be a little bit more disciplined when it comes to responding to WhatsApp messages and sometimes a few messages from your friends and so on. Because uh, without a joke, I, I probably receive uh, uh, such a number of messages a day that I... I cannot go through them. I just cannot go through them. How do you deal with that? I don't. <coughs> yeah. I, I just ignore them. Mm-hmm. I, I can't deal with it. So people have to just understand. I mean, you get emails that come in. You get uh, messages on all platforms. I concentrate, number one, on WhatsApp. And then on, on emails, I'll under, I'll be able to answer about five emails a day from a few thousand. Five oh, only. Lord. Five only. And I do have admin, my family helps, and so on. Checking the top, the, the titles, you know the subjects of the emails and they they sometimes get uh, to give me some important emails sometimes i miss the email so you really need me you're going to have to find my number and call me or you're going to have to call someone who you know can actually call me and so on because if i always say please benefit from other scholars i'm not, <coughs> not the only guy on earth benefit from the local scholars benefit from others who are there and inshallah you'll be able to unfortunately sometimes uh, m- m- many people think you know this is the only guy i'm going to ask but why Mm-hmm. Maybe they, they, they trust what you're going to tell them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, one of the worst things is when they say, look, I've asked this sheikh, he said that, now what do you have to say? I say, I don't have anything to say, yeah. he's already asked. <laughs> People want to do fatwa shopping. Mm-hmm. So, I was going to say to you, um, in terms of like legacy, let's use the word, I'm not, not using it in a <coughs> materialistic sense, in terms of an ukhrawi sense, like in terms of a uh, hereafter sense, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously he's going to, you were talking about the book. Um, there's lots of people in the Dawah that have put forward certain things like, for example, you you know Zakir and Nike, he's like more specialized comparative in religion. comparative religion, um, Norman Ali Khan, more like uh, Quran and these kinds of things. And they're, they're specialized in that, as you were mentioning, specialisms before, uh, you're quite often uh, mentioned in the same bracket as these individuals in the sense that I think there was a, there's something to do with the... It's not important, but yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So what what is it that, uh, in particular, in terms of contribution, if someone was going to transcribe, for example, your work, yeah. if someone was going to take some video material and actually try and transcribe it, where would you um, direct them to so that it could leave, you know, some something when you die, a legacy behind? I think I think uh, let me deal with that in two fronts. <clears throat> right. Number one is yeah. there is a transcription happening as we're speaking of not some sure. of the no. stuff. So it, it, it's been working. The, I'm the one holding it back because I feel there are <coughs> scholars who are much more qualified, who have material in the, in the same fields. You know, who am I? It's like someone told me, have you ever recorded a full Quran? You read quite well. And I said, mm. I have ijazah. I, you may think I read well, but 
if if you want a voice, there are better voices than mine, so it deletes me. If you want tajweed, there's better tajweed than mine, so it deletes me. So what's the point for me to go and record the whole Quran? It could be tablis tablis, it could be so, people might have a special um, yeah, connection yeah, with your voice. So now they're trying to convince me I may do it. Yeah, and, and this is me. I, yeah. Sometimes I feel I don't want to contaminate that intention of mine, so right, I just right. want to leave it. If I think you know what, it's not absolutely. There's something better than this in the market already, so let it happen, you know. So there are two or three uh, works that are already done, ready for me to just give a go ahead, and I just held it back. Okay. Number one. So that's that's from there. Number two is what people don't realize is my presence on social media and my presence across. And just for the last two to a few years, it's increased a little bit, but that's not my core work. You mm-hmm. see. So I come from uh, Zimbabwe, right. and in Zimbabwe, subhanAllah, I, I belong to, well, I work with the Council of Scholars, and I happen to be the Vice President of the Council at the same time, and I was appointed the Mufti also to, almost 20 years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, it's, it's a very difficult position, because we are still <coughs> students of knowledge, I don't normally like to issue uh, fatawa and so on, we just get from the scholars and, and, and no. relate them, and relate them, mm-hmm. and we normally deal with our communities, I don't mm-hmm. want to... I don't want to become an international sort of a fatwa who's gonna uh, fatwa uh, you know department that's going right, to, right, right. There are people already doing it, and they're doing a very good job. Why mm-hmm. reinvent the wheel? I don't need to do the same thing. But mm-hmm. in my community, they they need it. Mm-hmm. So over the last uh, forty five years, we've built about fifty masjids. Wow. Yeah, we, and, and that's why I say I don't need to, I don't, we, don't, we, we don't need to tell this to people. I mean, small mutawa that it's it's mm-hmm. in it's in uh, rural areas, meaning. Mm-hmm doesn't even cost so much, but that's what we've done. We've got little schools, almost 40-something school, sure, schools that have happened. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, uh, people who've graduated from our institutions, a lot of them. We've got four massive institutions, huge ones. Yes, sure, and uh, subhanAllah... It, it, the people it, don't really know about this. Though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or is it? Is I it haven't it? told them. Yeah, okay. yeah. They know. People, people, yeah. people who are close to you know. Yeah, yeah. It's but probably. do we... We're working for why? Why is it that we need to publicize everything? No, you don't say, yeah. Well, you know, it's get out and tell the world what you do. I say, But why? Allah knows. Why do we have to tell the world? It's true. It's and what do I need them for? I, you know, they, they say, Okay, and all of this is actually totally free of charge. All oh, of oh, this oh, is free of charge. So, you know, if you have uh, donors from your local community, I've never been outside either. Mm-hmm. You know, people say, But how do you operate? I say, Allah, Allah helps. Allah, Allah guides. Allah. People know. So that's that to me is the core activity. Right. Allah. That to me community is work. Yeah, and a real life work, one on one work. Not it doesn't need to be shown online. We we have a. It's a double edged sword. Mm-hmm. On one hand, people want to encourage others, so they tell the world. But you know what? You if you if you. Tell too much. There's one of two problems that can happen. It can make you that ujub that we're talking about. You know, I'm, look what I've achieved. No one's done what yeah. I've done. It oh. makes you think that. Number two <laughs> is people, the haters or the detractors, would know how to destroy you because now they know too much about you. So this is why Allah says, "Wa ida about the hypocrites, wa ida jaahum amrum min al amni aw al khawfi adhaa'u bihi, wa la wradduhu ila al rasooli wa ila ul al amri minhum la alimahu al ladhin yastamdhuna mu minhum, wa la ula fadl Allah alaykum wa rahmatuhu la tabaatum al shaytan illa qalila." Allah tells us how important it is that when you have news of, you know, security or war, or good or bad. <laughs> You don't just announce it. You don't just relay. With us, the first thing we now do is announce it. Turn on YouTube. I promise you, put it on Instagram. You know? Instagram. So, so what happens? There's pros and cons. Yes. Now I make it easy. So this is what I say. Um, um. We, we we're working on things. You know, I, I've had people who who, who refute uh, in, in different ways. Uh, Refutation, yeah, 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 yeah. And and why? I just thought of something when you say, you know, you leave behind something yeah. and you do things. Right. 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 You know, da'wah, like I told you, some people want you to do whatever they do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they don't see the light in what you do. And they refuse to see the importance of what another person is doing. And mm-hmm. I'm not that, alhamdulillah. I always try to look at the importance of what another person is doing, even if he's just a cameraman. Mm. You see, you're a cameraman, you, you studied videography and you did whatever else. And you we need the cameraman, they're the most important. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and nothing will be happening. Here. Imagine if I say, brother, you're going to Nar Jahannam because you just with this tasweer all your life. <laughs> What a, he, he'd probably give it up. We need him as well. He's he's getting an equal reward. He's getting an equal reward. We <laughs> yes. mm. and, and he's helping. You know. Mm, mm, mm. But I give you.
give you an example. If I, we have, like I told you, teaching as well. Mm -hmm. I, we have specialized durus in the masjid back at home. I'm on a roster basis. I'm an imam mm -hmm. in the masjid as well. Mm -hmm. I lead salah on a roster basis. Mm -hmm. If I'm not there, there is someone who, you know, and he'll take my place. But there, there is, you know, people say, ah, oh, this guy, when he goes, he just gives a, a one motivation lecture. What does he do? Mm -hmm. You know, you rather have a workshop where, you know, you have a, people who specialize. Let me tell you, not everyone needs to specialize. Number two is, if you want me to talk, I'll ask you, did the Prophet ﷺ have workshops or give lectures? Mm. Tell me. Nabi yani he spoke to the spoke to the Sahaba. He did khutab on Jum'ah, he did mm. khutab on the things, he taught the people. He Because he was so powerful, mm. it was the lectures, but the specialized learning happened through those lectures as well. Mm. The way we have categorized it now, we cannot call it a bid'ah because it's a wasila, it's just wasail. Mm -hmm. But if someone wants to be hard and fast, they could tell you that's not the prophetic way. Yeah. I won't say that. I say, we need the workshops, we need the lectures, we need the training courses, we need the holiday lessons, we need the weekly, we need the study, we need the school, we need the everything we need. It's, I'm not one. But if you're going to attack me, I, I, if I've come to your community and I don't have the time to conduct a workshop, why do you want to attack me? Mm -hmm. I, I could refute you, and I could actually refute you so badly. <laughs> I promise you. I refute myself. <coughs> but if, I, if I start refuting and I get into this engage, I'm losing focus. I've got Absolutely. bigger things mm -hmm. to do. What I, I, it could I, be a problem from Shaitan. Allah has given me Definitely. this day. Today, I will tick off what I've done in mental tick off. And I need today to be better than yesterday. Allah and Allah. I don't want to waste my time with negativity. I, Allah I, Allah. You can think bad of me, khalas, it's up to you. Think mm. bad of me. It's not going to reduce the price of eggs that I'm going to buy from the store <laughs> <laughs> or increase. You know what yeah, I mean? It's got nothing to do. Mm. With the, so if, if the only thing is when people become violent, Mm. Like I've had death threats from our own people. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They call you a murtad, they call you a mushrik, they call you a trafi, mm. they call you a fasi. They've even tried, they've even tried it. I've, I've had people who've actually shot at me. Inna li Close friends. So, well, this was a couple of years ago. Yes, I, 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 I remember hearing it. I thought it was fake news. No, no, it wasn't fake news. And, and, and uh, that's Why, the reason. What was the reason for that? Just because they believe you, you know, you, you're a mushrik or, or you're a murtad or, or you're, you're a Kustahi Rasul, they say, you know, you insult the Prophet <laughs> by this. And, and, and it's a legitimate difference of opinion. But, you know, people are quick to remove others from the fold of Islam. So I've tasted what takfir would actually do uh, when it's just loosely thrown out. Absolutely. You know? I've tasted what it will do. Because even the best of us would actually just be... Uh, that itself is what you call extremism. You know, when you, when you don't think of what you're saying, that where it's going to lead to. Because one person says something... Uh, and they think they're doing a good deed, they think they're doing da'wah, etc. But how the others will translate it is very different. They'll add one and one and make a natija of five. And, and they'll take it in their own hands to go and harm and attack a person. And they've done it to me. Wow. Just because of... Was, that, was that in your country? or No, in, in South Africa. No. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and uh, I, I've never been back to that place after that, but I'm going to go back now in January. We can come back to each other. We'll get the, we'll get the, no. we'll get the boys there yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> really, to I protect you. <laughs> you know, to, be, to be honest, yeah, and I think mm. even those people have realized that no, this guy is not what we thought he was. I, mm. I think they've realized that. I, yeah. And it, it was easy for me to actually have taken that and made a big noise of it, and you know, yeah. uh, probably gone into the courts and for, But for what? You're gonna get. You're gonna start getting two camps of Muslimin uh, fighting each other, and when 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 the followers get involved, they make it worse than the principles. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. It's like any of the Mashaikh. You see, nice guys. Mm. Some of, some of their followers are, are, are worse worse Absolutely. than anything that they would ever have allowed. But they they claiming to be followers of that Sheikh. Mm. I've seen yes. that a lot. We've seen what that. advice would you give, as a, maybe as a final question, because I know yeah, uh, we're we'll pressed for time. Press for time. Um, <coughs> what advice would you, general advice, would you give um, Muslims in the West who are facing those difficulties that you talked about? Uh, I mean, I was reading something from Pew Research um, that said in America, 24%, 23, 24% of Muslims apostate in America. Yeah. Um, and I think you're seen as a beacon of light in the sense that you kind of unify the people and, and you've brought a lot of, maybe you've curtailed that number. What advice, final advice would you give? Okay, my, 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 my job is normally to reach out to people who are quite weak. Uh, yeah. But 
I, I want to encourage them. I want to, I want to identify the good in them because look, my brother, everyone has good and bad. Yeah, yeah. It's just that one is more than the other. Some exactly. have, and I have a job of identifying goodness in a person. So even if I see someone who looks apparently far from the deen, mm-hmm. I, I'll try and say a word that will make them feel, gosh, you know, I'm actually a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, Subhan- you know, Subhan- because I know the Subhan- impact of that instead of me wow. picking on something and saying, you know what, you, that's mm. it, you know, because Allah. we chase the people away. So w- w- when you say people apostate, a lot of the times it's because of us chasing them away because of Subhan- we're not mm-hmm. considerate of their situation. And Subhan- I've said that earlier on today. That, you know, we're not considerate of their situation. So we start saying things that are hurtful. And, and then you have others who are telling them good words. So then they go towards it. As much as we say Islam is the fastest growing religion in the globe. I want to tell you something that I've studied. Mm. I've studied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the religion with the large number of defectors. The largest number it's of powerful. defectors. Mm. Did you know that? Mm. I can tell you. That doesn't mean the number of defectors is more than the number of those yeah. who enter. But from all others... Those who are leaving Islam, and you don't even know, people are living in your home and it's second, third generation in the Western world, they're not even Muslim. They're not even Muslim. They don't care about Islam, but their name is Muslim and you think they're Muslim because they're in the situation. I did a little survey of Salat al Eid and I found that 50% of the guys don't even go to Eid. Allah. Mm. They don't even go to Eid. Subhanallah. It's sad. And it's I'd like you to actually do it here in your part of the world. See what happens. something we can arrange, inshallah. If you, if you have the masajid, check the capacity of the masajid and look at the number of Muslims you have. You're going to mm. find even for Jum'a, you only have a third of the Muslims attending. Mm. I'm talking of the males who are supposed to attend. Mm-hmm. So it's very scary. Now, if, if you have a person just coming into the dawah and he's screaming and yelling and shouting at the people, and so on, he's going to preach to the preached. I always, when I sit in the masjid, I ask myself, do these guys regularly come to the masjid? If they do, now you're preaching to the priest. You're just encouraging them to be steadfast, which is important. I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> I I have decided to specialize in something different. And this is where people differ with me because mm. they don't know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. I take it out of the masjid. Take it to a hall. Take it to a function place. Take it <laughs> somewhere else. If, in, in my case, I'm, I'm not saying all oh, the time. Yeah, but, yeah. And attract people who are... Who, who, when you looked at them, you would think this person would never attend an Islamic talk. They've come. Allah. And make them feel like they are so, so special on that day Spare. that they would come back again. And it will require three or four of those and the person's life would change. I've had thousands of people telling me, you changed my life. I said, no, not me. Allah did. Allah. And you don't need to tell me. But, and that's why when people say what you're doing is not important, it doesn't have an impact. It has a bigger impact than what a lot of the others are doing, but they don't Spare. know. And I'm not there to compete, so I just keep quiet. And I don't even want... I know that it, it, what the Qur'an and Sunnah has taught us to talk to people... I, we were all astray at some stage. I know what's helped me. I know what's helped... I mean, imagine if someone had to sit with you and make you feel like you're a non-Muslim because of two or three things that have gone wrong with you or with you outwardly or inwardly. I mean, wouldn't you love someone to take you by your hand and say, Brother, you know what you're doing is wrong. You're a very good guy. I've got a lot of hope in you. I see so much goodness in you. One thing needs a bit of correction. What do you think? Wouldn't you like someone to say that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we don't do that to others. The way you're saying it makes me want to do it. But but we don't do that to others. Yeah. And this is where I find, uh, you know, I I've it's been my dream to have to have workshops for those in Dawa to try and say let's exchange notes, let's see. I I think that's something we can arrange. arrange No, but there's a problem. The problem is, and I have I have uh, sort of been a part of something broader and have shared some very very. Mm. Uh, good notes with some of the brothers, but I find that some of them they still won't appreciate what you've told them because they they need to learn through their own experience. experience yeah. If uh-huh. you listened to me when I graduated, I was so harsh and harsh. <laughs> if you heard me, you would run away. I promise you. But you know what? We've we've come to the, the ground level over time, mm-hmm. and we've realized I'm just a number, man. You know, <coughs> may Allah use us to encourage people. It, if Allah uses you to guide one, it's better for you than whatever the, the, the you know, the, Humber Humber Nam. Yeah, Humber Nam, the red camel, meaning the conveyance that was the most expensive at the time. Mm-hmm. So uh, imagine if one person reads Salah, if one person puts on the hijab because mm-hmm. of the way you spoke, because of the way you said the message, because and, and you didn't preach it down. 
but across you spoke to them, you encouraged them, you identified good. Don't you believe everyone has good in them? Absolutely. People are like the mines of gold and silver. They have in they have in them some goodness. If, if you have the ability to extract that, to Perfect. shine it and to show them this is you, and they saw it and they changed, wallahi, that is success. So I'm cool. asking the people in Dawah, let's support one another. And the biggest support is don't attack each other. Allah, yeah. I, I don't Allah. need you to help me by finances and by this and even not, not even a good word, but don't say a bad word. Allah, mm. Allah. Leave me alone. We know what we're doing. We can say also what do you follow and which you know? I love to say I'm a Muslim, I follow Quran Sunnah as per the understanding of the early, of the earliest generations of Muslims. And I stop there. Mm -hmm. That's a better explanation than any single word can explain. Mm -hmm. Single words sometimes become politicized. Mm -hmm. Sometimes so. they become synonymous with extremism and terrorism. And sometimes, rightfully so, there's a band of people using the same word Absolutely. to do things that are terrible. To so, disparage so others. This is, this is the negative of using singular words. Keep mm -hmm. on, waqala inna ni minal muslimin. People say, no, but this sheikh said that, that sheikh said that. Those sheikhs, ijtihad is their own ijtihad. And following the form of that, I'm fine. sticking to the Quran. Yeah. If someone wants to do that, yeah. let them do it. But if I don't want to do it, don't say that, brother, you're a straight. Yes. No, no, no. It's a bit too heavy, man. Barakallahu mm -hmm. Allah grant us Jesus wisdom and hikmah. Allahumma ameen. It was an uh, absolute pleasure. Shukran. 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 Uh, brothers and sisters, I hope, inshallah, you benefited just as we have benefited immensely. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our Shaykh uh, Mufti Menk and to increase him in khair. Like, Share, subscribe, inshallah, and tune in for another episode of Salam Kas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.